Welcome to Bovar, the historic home of Jefferson Davis, the first and only president of the Confederate States of America. Located in Biloxi, Mississippi, Bovar is a must-visit destination for anyone interested in American history or the Civil War. We're going to be touring the home, learning about its history, visiting the Presidential Library and Museum, and finally, walking over to the Confederate Cemetery to pay our respects to the Confederate veterans buried there. Join us as we step back in time and discover the rich heritage of this remarkable site. Bovar was built in 1852 by Mississippi planner James Brown as his summer home. In addition to the main house here, which was originally named Orange Grove, Brown built two cottages, one on the east called a library cottage that he used as his office, and one on the west called the Hayes Cottage, which was used as a guest cottage. Brown would continue to own Bovar until his death in 1866. The property was then sold for taxes in 1873 to a speculator named Frank Johnston, who later sold it to Sarah Ann Dorsey, the daughter of a wealthy plantation owner in Natchez, childhood friend of Verena Davis, President Davis' second wife, and an author of six novels and one nonfiction work. After the death of her husband, Sarah and one of her cousins moved into the house and gave it its name, Bovar, after its beautiful view. When the war between the states broke out April of 1861, Jefferson Davis, who was a senator representing Mississippi, resigned his office and was elected as the president of the Confederate States of America by the Provisional Congress meeting in Montgomery, Alabama. After the war, Davis was in prison for two years and was going to be tried for treason when Andrew Johnston issued a blanket amnesty on Christmas Day, 1868. In 1875, while on a trip to the Mississippi Gulf Coast, Jeff Davis, who was looking for a place to write his book, visited Sarah Dorsey here at Bovar. A year later on a return trip, Sarah offered to rent Davis the library cottage just behind me for $50 a month, which he gladly accepted. Davis paid for the construction to enclose the rear gallery to become his bedroom, and Mrs. Dorsey made arrangements for Davis's servant, Robert Brown, and his secretary, Major William T. Walthall. Davis had left many of his papers in South Carolina when Richmond was evacuated at the end of the war, and after retrieving them, he, Major Walthall, his oldest son, Jeff Jr., and Mrs. Dorsey set to work on his books. Davis's wife, Verena, had been in Europe until October of 1877 when she returned to the U.S. and stayed with their daughter, Margaret, in Memphis. Verena had made it known that she didn't want to live on the Gulf Coast, and there had also been rumors circulating that Davis and Sarah had had an affair. Finally, though, Verena moved to Bovar and found out that she liked it there. In February of 1879, knowing that she had breast cancer, Sarah sold Bovar to Davis for $5,500 and moved to New Orleans. She also changed her will to leave everything to Davis upon her passing. Sarah died on the 4th of July, 1879, and was buried next to her husband in Natchez, Mississippi. In 1881, Davis published his 1,500-page, two-volume, The Rise and Fall of the Confederate Government. By 1890, the book had sold more than 22,000 copies. Also in 1889, Davis wrote a short history of the Confederate States of America while living at Bovar. Jefferson Davis died on December the 6th, 1889 in New Orleans. Over 200,000 mourners attended his funeral and burial at the Metairie Cemetery. In 1893, Verena decided to have Davis reinterred at the Hollywood Cemetery in Richmond, Virginia. Upon Davis' death, ownership of Bovar passed to his daughter, Verena Ann Davis, known as Winnie, and upon her death in 1898, back to Davis's wife, Verena. Winnie and Verena turned down several lucrative offers to buy Bovar, one for $90,000 from a developer, but instead, she sold Bovar for the sum of $10,000 to the Mississippi Division of the Sons of Confederate Veterans with the stipulation that it be operated as a Confederate soldier's home. From 1903 to 1957, under an agreement between the Sons of Confederate Veterans and the state of Mississippi, Bovar was a home for Confederate veterans and their spouses. 
hospital and a chapel were built along with 12 barracks that could house as many as 250 inmates, that's what residents were called at one time. Walking from the rear of the house, past the lagoon, you'll come to the Bovar Confederate Cemetery, where 780 Confederate veterans and their spouses are buried. Most were inmates of the veterans' home, like John W. Gamble, who was a private in the Company C of the 2nd Alabama Infantry. In 1979, the remains of a Confederate veteran were found at the Vicksburg National Battlefield. On June the 6th, 1981, the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier was unveiled at the Bovar Confederate Cemetery. On August 29, 2005, Hurricane Katrina made landfall along the Louisiana-Mississippi coastline with wind speeds of 120 miles per hour and pushing a 27-foot storm surge inland. The house and its contents were severely damaged and the library and the Hayes cottages were completely destroyed. The original presidential library was damaged to the extent that it had to be torn down and a new one built. With funding from the Federal Emergency Management Agency, the state of Mississippi, and private donations, the restoration of Bovar began in 2007. And while Katrina was certainly tragic in terms of the loss of life and property damage, it did offer the opportunity to restore the house to its original Davis error state. The millwork, ground level lattices, and other historic features were fully restored and after three years, Bovar was fully revitalized to its original historic identity. The house was reopened on Jeff Davis's 200th birthday on June the 3rd, 2008. Construction on the new Jefferson Davis Presidential Library and Museum began in 2009 and was completed and reopened in June 2013. The Presidential Library and Museum is managed by the Mississippi Division of the Sons of Confederate Veterans and boasts an extensive collection of books, genealogy research resources, and an exhibit of Civil War artifacts, including a first edition copy of Jefferson Davis' book, The Rise and Fall of the Confederate Government. When you come into the museum, you'll notice a portrait of Davis and his dog Traveler hanging in the entrance. Traveler was Sarah Dorsey's dog until her death, and then was the constant companion and guardian of Davis. When Traveler became ill and died, Davis is quoted to have said, I have indeed lost a friend. He had him buried in the front yard of Bovar, but unfortunately the marker has disappeared over time. The William Beckwith statue of Davis that once graced the rotunda of the old library now stands near the entrance of the new. I hope you enjoyed this short tour of Bovar. If you did, be sure and give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. And if you're ever in the area, be sure and stop by to experience this bit of Southern history for yourself.